Hey everybody, it's Nick here and I've been working on a Power Apps portal. I'm in the portal studio. I'm making some modifications to my product B page. And you probably noticed this as well if you've been working on a portal project recently, that it has in the properties pane to the right hand side here, there's this new permission section that's been added to our page. And we take a look at that, we see that we have the page available to everyone and there are most times if we want to surface a page on the Power Apps portal, of course, we want people to find it, to be able to interact with it. But there's sometimes that we want to protect it. Maybe there's confidential information that we only want our authenticated users to see or a variety of other reasons why we may want to protect this page. So this new permissions, it, it basically expands on... Uh, the ability to configure this in the portal management app but now it's bringing it again to the portal studio and of course microsoft is trying to continually improve the portal studio so it really helps folks that are building portals that they don't have to worry so much about the portal metadata they can go in and build their portals so let's just try this out let's just turn off this page available for everyone and what that's going to do it's going to allow us to select some roles now of course these are web roles that normally we would create in the um, portal management app, which is that model driven app that used to manage the portal metadata that's sitting in Dataverse. I'm just going to click on select roles here and I have my administrators and my authenticated users. Now the product manager is one I've added and what I can do is I can just click on that manage roles and that's going to take me directly into my portal management app so I don't even really need to worry about having to go out to the maker portal and navigate to it. So I here I have my product manager web role already set up and let's just take a look here quickly. Um, when you're setting up a brand new web role, you can give it any name that you want. I've just again picked my starter portal. I should be putting a description in here just so if someone else is working on this portal, they'll know what this web role means. Because it's not a default role for authenticated users or anonymous users, we're just going to leave those as no for now. If you were to look at the authenticated users role, the anonymous users role, you would see that these would be turned on. Uh, we're not going to get too much into that today. And if I just go to something like related, I can see the contacts and the contacts, of course, are portal users. I don't have any portal users associated with this yet, but if I wanted someone to have that role, I would just simply add them as an existing contact or in their contact record, add the role from that way. So different ways we can go about that. Let's pop back to our uh, portal studio and continue working with this. And I'm in here again. So I'm just going to go back to that select roles. I'm going to choose product manager and we also can apply the permissions to child files. And again, I'm not going to worry too much about that now, but if we had other file, other web pages below this, we would apply that permission to those as well. And that's it. It's very simple, straightforward. So if I were to go and browse the website now, and let's just go directly to the home page. And actually, before we, uh, let me just go that there again. Notice now under services, there's a little lock icon on that page here. So we see that it has permissions enabled on our tool belt as reviewing those pages. So we're in home and we're just going to browse to our website. And now if I navigate to see that page, I see product A, but I don't see product B. In order to see product B, I'm going to need to log in. So again, so that's really how the basics of those permissions work. And that's great that page is hidden, so there's no way to get to it. Now, sometimes we want people to know that there is a page existing, but we want to force them to log in. Maybe they're going to see product A, they're interested, um, but then we still want them to sign in. Well, there is a very easy way to go about that. And again, we need to be in the portal management app. So let's pop back over there. I'm in the portal management app, I'm seeing my website. So what I need to do is I'm going to browse to our web link sets. Now the web link sets represent our menus that we see on our Power Apps portal. And we don't have a way to, to modify those web link sets too, too much on the portal studio. We can hide pages uh, or remove them from the, the menu. However, you can still access them through the URL. So that's why web page permissions are so important. I'm going to go into the default one, which is generally the one that's the main page when you provision a portal. And I'm going to go into links and we see here that we have product B sample and I'm going to go into that particular link. And we see that we have the name, it's published and it's uh, the parent link and it's pointing to that product B page. And remember when we edited that page in this portal studio, we made sure that there was permissions applied. Now, if I scroll down uh, past the content here, we see that we have a disabled page validation. And basically by turning that on, 
we're just going to save this. What that's going to allow it to do is have this la this link show up, but we're still it's still the page itself will still be protected by permissions. So I'm back in the Portal Studio again, and I'm going to hit Browse. And what this is going to do, it's going to clear the cache. So we've cleared the cache. We're back into our Portal page. I'm going to go to Services. Ah, Product B has now shown up again. But remember, Product B is protected by permissions. So if I click on this, what the portal will actually do is redirect me into the login page. So this means I need to log in to view that particular page. So I'm going to sign in with Jim and Jim has already set up as a contact. But remember for our product manager web role, we didn't assign any contacts to that page. So even though Jim now has a login and he's considered an authenticated user, Jim has logged in now. So we see that Jim has logged in. But now he has an access denied because he doesn't have permission to view that requested content. It's pretty straightforward. If we want him to view that, then what we're going to need to do is in the portal management app, assign him to that particular web role that has access to that page. So we're back in the portal management app. We see this in the this section here, web page access control rules, that the portal studio did create a restrict read on product B web role. So or sorry, web page access control rule. So that's what the Portal Studio did. It created that record. We could have created this manually. That would have been the old way to do it, but now we have the Portal Studio to do that for us. And again, this was already linked to, if I look at this, we look at the web roles, we see that it was linked to Product Manager. So if I go into Product Manager and go into Related Contacts, um, let's add Jim. So Jim's there, we're gonna add him. He's now belonging to that web role. So let's go back to the portal and see if Jim has access. We're back to our portal. We go to services and Jim is logged in here. We click on product B and we see that, you know, Jim has available the availability to see this particular page. And of course, if he signs out, then that page is going to again, take us to the login because it's going to force us to log in. Page is still going to show up, but we're not going to be able to get to it. So that's the web page permissions in a nutshell using that new functionality. At the end of the day, there's really nothing new in terms of how the back end works. Um, we were, were able to protect our pages before, but now with the Portal Studio, we're able to, that is one more thing we're able to do in the Portal Studio that we would have had to use the Portal Management app exclusively for. And we can see the evolution of the Portal Studio is continuing on down that road, making it much easier for anybody working with the Portal to create pages, protect pages. And we know on the roadmap, there's still some more exciting stuff coming and we'll definitely be updating this with more videos and more training content. So please check us out, check out some of our courses and look forward to talking to you again real soon.